Hey guys, what's up? So we're doing a video flask versus Django and the reason why I'm doing this video now is actually I've done a tutorial series recently where I've uh, gotten into flask quite a bit not just with the tutorial series itself but beyond that just because I'm actually in the process of um, putting up a few production websites that are going to be using Flask and I uh, really just wanted to see what all the, the fuss was about. I mean, uh, Flask has gotten a lot of attention as of late uh, with being the more modern framework and in this video I just want to kind of compare the two um, from my perspective and I've actually, you know, I'm a programmer, a senior programmer, um, typically do C Sharp and ASP.NET but I've been involved in Django for the last five years so I'm definitely a huge fan of Django just recently got involved in Flask. Uh, so I really feel like I, I have some perspective on, on the two and I, I have production websites in both of them. So this conversation takes place, you know, as of uh, 2016, the time of this video. So technologies and things change a lot. Uh, so the first, things, uh, first thing first, we want to just look at uh, what are these two frameworks. So Flask is a micro web framework written in Python and based on the WorkZoo toolkit and the Genja 2 template engine. Uh, it is BSD license, license, meaning that it is free to use, so any sort of company or private individual is free to use Flask to build whatever sort of billion-dollar website that they want to build. So uh, that's pretty awesome. And as far as Flask is concerned, when it says that it's a micro-web application, it means that it is, uh, you know, that it, that is what it sa says it is. It's a very bare-bones application. They don't give you much to work with. Um, but it is fast and it is, you know, yours to, to mold into whatever you want it to be. So Django is also a free and open source web application written in Python. So both frameworks are in, on the Python programming language. And it has an MVC architecture, which so does Flask. And it is maintained by the Django Software Foundation, which is a, um, a nonprofit group, which has quite a bit of money nowadays uh, due to a lot of corporate backing. So the bottom line, when you compare the two, they're both written on the Python programming language and they're both free to use to build whatever sort of website you want to build. A common thing that you want to look at whenever you're comparing web frameworks is you want to look at speed and which ones are faster. Now the problem with speed tests is that they can all be taken with a grain of salt. A lot of the speed tests depend on um, the actual hardware that is actually running the test. It can sometimes depend on network latency. Um, it can also depend on whether or not the guy that's conducting the test is running a bunch of applications on his operating system at the time that he's conducting the test. So you can never be 100% sure when, when somebody says, oh, this is faster than this. Um, it's sometimes it's the actual way that the code is written that can also be uh, the problem. However, I think that most people would not argue with the fact that Flask is quite a bit faster than Django um, just because there's less going on with Flask as opposed to Django. So um, if you look at this speed test, which um, this is the photo, uh, the credit, um, this this guy made a GitHub page just about a different speed test, and I'm not sure what sort of agenda he has. Maybe he has no agenda, maybe he does, I don't know. But um, this is a pretty reputable, I think, speed test. And uh, from my own observations, I mean, Flask is about three times faster than Django. So in this case... Um, it's actually saying it's quite a bit faster, more like five times faster, but uh, th this is just, you can see requests per second, 259 compared to Django, and Django is actually quite a bit slower than a lot of these other frameworks. And the reason for that is because Django is not a micro framework. It is a opinionated framework that has a ton of stuff that it does for you out of the box. So when you compare, you know, what are these two frameworks doing for you, Django is going to do a whole heck of a lot more for you than Flask. Um, for starters, like authentication, uh, administration. Django has an entire built-in admin system that you can actually manipulate all your database objects when it comes to actually adding users and, and managing roles and permissions and all that stuff. Django does all that for you out of the box. Flask has none of that. So for a lot of newbies uh, that just want to get a, a website out there or a lot of skilled developers that just want to get a website out there quickly without having to write all that stuff, uh, they you know sometimes see Django as the, being the better option. However, I will say that Flask also has some opinionated uh, plugins that you can actually just easily install into your Flask application, like Flask Security, which is opinionated on how it handles roles and permissions and stuff like that. So as opinionated as that is, I can say that Django definitely has a, a step up on Flask when it comes to managing that type of stuff because Django just works for you out of the box. Flask Security is pretty cool, but it still doesn't do everything you need it to do like, the, like what you have with Django coming out of the box. So 
another thing, when you look at the health of a framework, you want to look at what kind of corporate sponsors are actually backing the project. So Django has been around for over 10 years now, and they've grown. They're, they're, uh, they're a hum, they're huge uh, corporation now. You're a private, um, what they call a nonprofit. But they, they have a ton of corporate sponsors, and there's a ton of billion-dollar you know, websites and um, you know, companies that, that rely upon Django. And uh, Mozilla is just one of them. And then you also have all the, the actual websites that, that use, you know, these, this Django framework. Um, so companies like Microsoft and Eventbrite, I mean, they've actually sponsored Django cons and stuff like that. So um, Django definitely has flask beat when it comes to corporate sponsors. It's not going anywhere. There's so much money that relies upon Django to, to work and continue to work that you're not going to see flask overtake Django anytime soon. Now, as far as Flask corporate sponsors, I couldn't find any. Like, so there might be some. I'm sure there are some, but there are definitely none that I could find, and um, they don't list them on their their Flask website like Django does. Django also has uh, Django Con because Django is so big. They actually have a conference that happens uh, at least once a year, maybe twice a year. Uh, I believe that it happened in Los Angeles, and lately it's been, I think, in Montreal, Canada. But um, you know, it's it's so popular that they have their own conference. You know, so um, that's pretty cool. Flask doesn't have one, so Flask uh, no no Flask con as far as I'm, I'm I'm as 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 far as I'm aware. So when we look at um, whether or not major companies have actually taken the plunge and and dedicated themselves to a certain piece of technology, it's always important to look at you know who is backing who. Um, so with Flask, even though they don't have a ton of corporate sponsors. Uh, Flask is actually the uh, the core back end for Pinterest now. Pinterest used to be on Django, and for the longest time I touted that Pinterest was the you know, fastest growing website in the world. But back in 2014, they actually got off the Django stack and, and built their own stack, but they built it on top of Flask. So it's not like it's using you know what Flask has for you out of the box. They took Flask as a starting point and then made it into their own thing. And I've actually made a video on this in the past. Um, you shouldn't just look at these billion-dollar companies because a lot of people are like, well, Facebook uses PHP, and, and that means PHP is great, and Wikipedia uses it, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, and Twitter uses Ruby and all that stuff, but eventually these sites like Twitter and Facebook, they, they their, their stack doesn't even remotely resemble any sort of starting point that you would have you know, with some sort of PHP framework or some Python framework or a Ruby framework. They eventually have to custom roll their own stuff. They have so much crap going on that they it just it's not even in the same it's not even in the same discussion anymore. Um, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't a, an important point of them picking a framework and then taking it and then starting with that. Because in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. Once you get that big, you're going to be kind of writing your own solution anyway. So it doesn't matter what sort of framework you're using at that point. Uh, the point is to try to get your product out there. Get it done, you know, as quickly and as fastly and, and as reliably as possible, and that's why you use a framework. And then if it does blow up and it gets big, you can have, you know, hundred thousand dollar a year salary developers and engineers working around the clock trying to rewrite your app into something that's a little bit more suitable for your business model. But until you reach that point, um, probably not a whole lot of, you know, uh, discussion and time should be spent evaluating and trying to future proof something that that most likely will never happen. Um, so anyway, Pinterest uses it, Twilio uses it, and Reddit.com. Now, Reddit.com doesn't use it as like their full stack, but they do use Flask for some of their back-end API. Uh, for Django, Django definitely has Flask beat when it comes to large websites using it. Three to, to just name uh, just a couple, just to be fair on both sides. In fact, my link is um, messed up here. I'm sorry, that still points to Flask, but... Um, websites that are using it, Instagram, huge website, Discuss. Uh, Discuss at one point had uh, scaled to over like 1 billion monthly viewers uh, or users, um, unique users every month. And um, they explain some of how they do that with uh, Django, and they still use Django. And then uh, Dropbox. So Dropbox is a, um, you know, they hired the Python creator Guido Van Rossum to come over and help them, but um, Dropbox has been starting to use some of the Go programming language to try to... Um, do some of their you know hard uh, hardcore you know multi processor concurrency um, programming that Python's just not 100% well suited for, uh, but they do still use uh, Django for their website at Dropbox. When it comes to a learning curve, Flask beats Django by a long shot. Uh, there's no magic involved, meaning that uh, a lot of the stuff that that Django does for you out of the box, you know, there is like a ton of code, literally thousands upon thousands of lines of code that's been written over almost a decade. 
um, that is doing all kinds of stuff that you have no idea what it's doing and how it works and how it's doing it. So Flask has a little bit of that, just like any sort of um, decent size framework. Um, however, it's not nearly as much. So when you're trying to actually learn all the inner workings of your website, Flask um, beats Django by a long shot when it comes to actually being able to understand that stuff and mold your website into your own vision. If you've ever used Node, um, Flask is very similar to something like Express.js, where Express.js is written on Node, and it doesn't do a whole lot for you, so it leaves a lot of that implementation, implementation up to you, which ultimately makes you much more familiar, familiar with your website. So you know, it takes more time, um, and there's pros and cons to all of that. So if time is, is of the urgency, then you, know, you don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. But if you have a bit of time, then it's always good to learn the inner workings of your framework because then one day something's not going to work right, and you're probably going to know exactly where that problem is if you wrote most of that code yourself um, as opposed to you know, relying upon like a Django source code where like, you have no idea what's going on. As far as future proofing, a lot of people want to know, okay, if I learn this technology, is it going to be around for the next five, ten years, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, they both are going to be around for a long time. There's so much stuff that's reliant upon Django. But as far as, like, you know, the future proof technology, what we're seeing of late is we're seeing um, these large web frameworks like Ruby on Rails and ASP.NET and Django. Um, we're seeing them kind of um, being less and less important as we move into the future because nowadays it's all about you know client-side code and javascript whether it's react or angular um, or ember or backbone or knockout or i can net list a ton of these you know javascript client-side frameworks that are actually handling a lot of the stuff that the server used to handle like routing authentication um, and data binding um, all, obviously all the data display that goes on in the view so all that dynamic uh, behavior of being able to take data and build uh, and calculate. A lot of that's being done in JavaScript now, so the server-side technology part of it is not nearly as important. So what people are looking for is they're looking for a very micro back-end server-side stack and then leave a lot of their implementation up to like the view side, which is going to be using, like I said, some sort of JavaScript framework so or library like React. And ultimately, that is, you know, what they say the future is going to be. So even the latest version of ASP.NET, the um, the supposed um, open open source and cross-platform version of ASP.NET, um, it's actually a very small thing that they call ASP.NET Core, um, which is a very small portion of what ASP.NET is. So. Um, you know, even Microsoft, you know, as, as closed source as they've been in the past, I mean, they're even trying to, like, scale back the massiveness of their of their .NET stacks, um, like ASP.NET. Um, so I'm sure it's not something that they, they want to do, but it's something that is, you know, being demanded for nowadays. Another important thing when you're looking at whether or not I'm going to do Django or Flask is you want to know how much am I going to pay to host this thing. So Linode is one of my favorite companies that I've ever done business with. I've used them now for probably three or four years, maybe more. Um, they're not shared hosting, so you don't have a bunch of you know uh, applications being slammed on a server and then it comes to a grinding halt whenever you you know you need it to work. Um, Linode guarantees you your resources. It's a virtual private host. So you're, you're guaranteed to have that. Uh, and it's not this, you know, um, platform as a service provider like Azure or Heroku or um, Amazon AWS or like a lot of those other major companies. Uh, they charge a lot because they do a lot of stuff. They build all these little, you know, GUI tools where you can just um, select a few drop downs and all of a sudden your server is supposed to be working. Even though there's still a huge learning curve there. Um, you know, they do a lot of that stuff for you, but they charge you for it too. So somebody like Linode or DigitalOcean, they basically say, hey, you give us 10 or 20 bucks a month, you can go ahead and just um, you know, click. All you gotta do is pick whatever sort of operating system you want, whether you want like CentOS or Ubuntu or um, something like that. And then ultimately it goes ahead, it sets up your server, you log into your server, and then you have to set up everything, like your super users, your firewall rules and all that stuff. And there's plenty of tutorials out there but you're going to pull your hair out at certain points trying to figure out how to set all that stuff up. But ultimately, if you are successful in doing so, you can you know, have a ton of traffic for a very small amount of money. So like this $20 a month account, just for instance, I had a movie website a couple of years ago that was getting over 250,000 hits. And that was just on one, one website. And when I say hits, I mean actual unique visitors a month. And um, 
I also had other websites running on it. And even with that traffic, it was a content site, you know, about movies and stuff like that. And um, even with all that traffic, I only exceeded like 10% of my available resources. So, um, I mean, this is a ton of resources for the price, and I've never actually had a problem with like stability or anything using Linode. So, um, whether you choose Flask or Django, hosting options are going to be plentiful. So, um, one doesn't really beat the other. So that's really it on my presentation between Django and Flask. And um, and just recently, I went ahead and uh, I I'm doing this um, Flask tutorial because I wanted to you know teach other people how to use Flask, and I hadn't really been too involved in Flask, but I went ahead and I, I have this new post website that I've owned for a long time and it used to actually be like a, just a general blog but it hasn't done anything for several years and I still own the domain. I could have a discussion of why owning a domain for a long time is important but this video is not a, that reason. Um, but that said, that's why the name is what it is. Um, but I went ahead and I just created this site to try to just showcase some of these tutorials that I put together. Um, you know, some of them aren't that great. I, I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. I, I like doing tutorials, and, you know, they may not be as good as, like, Code Academy or, you know, some of those other ones out there maybe. But um, I do focus on some of the niche stuff, I think, that, that maybe other people aren't focusing on. And, you know, ultimately, I like to learn and, and try to help other people learn too. So it is what it is. If you don't like it, you know, I guess that's that's fine. There's nothing I can do about that. But um, I do like to put those up there. And then I have, you know, these uh, these vlogs is what I call them. So that's kind of what I'm doing like right now where I can compare two technologies and stuff like that. And um, I also have, you know, I have some videos on here that aren't even just, you know, my own videos, videos that I found to be uh, very helpful from like people that are in the industry that kind of do the same thing that I'm doing um, and have done it before longer, than, you know, than I have uh, but like, you know, this guy, Eli, the computer guy, I'm sure if anybody, um, I'm sure some of my viewers have obviously watched some of his videos as well. But um, this is a good one, whether or not you have to be good at math to, to do IT. And um, I think it's funny because it's spot on. I, I have a lot of uh, similarities with him in, in regards to math. But um, yeah, that that is what it is. So this website here is using Flask um, and it's, you know, it's production on Linode and I don't know. It's just um, it was a it was a breeze to to work with. I mean, honestly, it's uh, just a, a simple website and very simple functionality and everything. But uh, and it's gonna get. I just actually put that up this morning on uh, Linode, so there's there's not a whole lot to this website. Eventually, it'll grow. But um, I just wanted to to let you guys know that if you're interested in like doing the Flax tutorial, like the same process that I made this website with and hosted on Linode is all going to be covered in this tutorial series. And I only have 10 videos right now. Um, the videos are going to get a little bit more complicated with like database management, like many to many relationships. Like you can see, I have a tutorial and this tutorial actually has a many to many relationship with actual videos. And I'll explain all of that in the tutorial series and also eventually how to deploy it to Linode, which could be a similar process if you decided to host with uh, DigitalOcean as well. And that's about it, guys. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you think. Please uh, please vote up and uh, subscribe if you would, please. I appreciate it. And thank you for everybody who has subscribed to my channel in the past and continues to do so. Have a good night, guys. Bye.